Hi everyone, I'm Tamsin and I'm a master's student at ICRO UWA. And today I'm going to be talking to you about an almost dark cloud that we found in the hydro field of Wallaby. So for a bit of context, let's take a look at the low surface brightness universe. First up, we've got our faint objects like low surface brightness galaxies and ultra diffuse galaxies that we heard about in the first section. The extreme end of the optical counterparts, but they don't tend to be as dark matter dominated and have more of a tidal or interaction based origin. And finally, we've got our almost dark clouds, and these have either become unstable to star formation or stars were stripped during the interaction process. My master's project began as a search for dark galaxy candidates in the phase one pilot data of Wallaby, so I was looking at the hydra field. And my first task was to perform some optical cross matching with NED. And I was using a 30 arc second match radius and initially a velocity criteria of 200 kilometers per second. This plot shows the offsets in the matches and right ascension and declination. And that circle just represents the size of the 30 arc second wallaby beam. Now we learned two interesting things from this. Firstly, NED does not have great coverage of the Southern hemisphere as we still had around 100 unmatched galaxies, and we're not expecting that many dark galaxy candidates in just one field. And secondly, the velocity criteria didn't actually make that much difference when we removed it. So with the angular resolution and sensitivity of Wallaby, it's actually sufficient to perform optical cross-matching just by filtering out the background galaxies, rather than relying on spectroscopic data and having a really strict velocity criteria. With all of the remaining unmatched detections, I overlaid the H1 contours onto the Delves G-band images, which were the deepest optical imaging that we had available at the time. And after going through these by eye, we found these six dark galaxy candidates here. Now, unfortunately, we could neither confirm nor deny their reality, as they do tend to lie quite close to the noise level. But luckily, one of our candidates had some archival data so we could use to confirm its reality. Upon closer inspection, this dark galaxy candidate is actually an almost dark cloud in the Pomola 13 group. And I want to point out here that Jen Batten is also using Wallaby data to study the intragroup gas and other potential clouds in this group. So keep an eye out for her work. It's really interesting. These are the Wallaby contours. Tobias kindly reran the source finder over this source to recover more of the extended emission so that we didn't have to rely on the automated pipeline for such a complex source. And then this is the archival ATCA data that I reduced using Myriad on top. Prior to being detected by both Wallaby and ATCA, the cloud was also detected by the VLA and Nunse, but no optical counterpart had been identified until now. So this is the DESI Legacy Imaging Survey Data Release 10 three color image that I created, so G, R, and Z bands. And you can see just how faint the cloud really is. We measured a stellar mass of about 10 to the eight solar masses and a mean surface brightness of 27 magnitudes per arc second squared. If you have a look at the contours, we can get a bit of an idea of the H1 distribution of the system. The peak flux lies over this galaxy here, which is Tol 9. Other things that we noticed about this group. These two galaxies were detected by Wallaby and not Atka. Well, this galaxy was detected by Atka and not Wallaby, and all three of these are really H1 deficient. There's also these two dark clouds that Atka detected that Wallaby doesn't. Again, we can neither confirm nor deny their reality, but based on the fact that they lied really close to the noise level in the Atka cube, we haven't included them in any of the further analysis. The red ellipses represent an optical aperture for each of the galaxies. And the ellipse around the cloud is an aperture that contains all of the gas from both the Wallaby and Atkin masks. This group contains 60% intergroup gas not contained in those apertures, so lots of interactions going on here. Now we'll take a really quick look at the kinematics. This is the Wallaby image of the cloud, so the velocity field moment one map. Look, looking at the mask, it seems as a bridge connecting the cloud to the rest of the group but that really strict velocity gradient tells us it's much more likely to be in projection. You'll also notice that there isn't a regular rotation pattern. So I wasn't able to create any meaningful kinematic models of it, but I was able to use 3D Brolo to create models of two of the more massive regularly rotating galaxies in this group. 
To study the global galaxy properties, I had to look at two common scaling relations. The first one is the H1 mass against the stellar mass. And all these colored points are the galaxies in the group. And the red one there is the cloud. Um, the light blue one is that northern galaxy that was at the top of the group. The purple points in the background are the X gas detections and the triangles are the non-detections with the black line being the rolling median and the shaded region, the 0.25 to 0.75 quartile area. I've also included the Wallaby Eridanus detections in blue because these span to the lower stellar masses that our cloud reaches, and they tend to be quite H1 deficient like a lot of the galaxies in our group. Now, it makes sense that a lot of our galaxies are H1 deficient. Firstly, because we're measuring the flux inside optical apertures, and it's well established that H1 extends beyond this. And secondly, this is an interacting group. We've already seen just how much of that gas is shared between the galaxies. The next plot is the gas fraction against specific star formation rate for all of those same galaxies. Quite a few of our galaxies have pretty low specific star formation rates compared to X gas. And our cloud has a higher gas fraction than all the other galaxies except one Eridanus detection. The last thing I want to talk about is a quick discussion on the origin and evolution of the cloud. In this moment one map, you can see that the cloud and the northern galaxy are both really blue. So the cloud's velocity is much more similar to that of the northern galaxies, despite it being the furthest away. And this made us think that maybe a tidal flyby interaction has occurred that involved the northern galaxy. Now, of course, it's not possible to know the exact orbital history of every single galaxy in this group. So instead, we studied two possible flyby scenarios just to give us a bit of insight into the cloud's origin. Firstly, involving the two nearby extremely H1 deficient galaxies. And secondly, with the closest galaxy, that spiral. And we concluded that, yes, a tidal flyby interaction is quite a likely origin for the cloud. The Clamola 13 group itself lies just inside the virial radius of the hydrocluster. So ram pressure stripping is likely to play an important role in its evolution. To help quantify of each galaxy from the cluster center. This horizontal line here represents the point above which ram pressure stripping becomes important. And that red line, which is the cloud, sits well above this telling us, yes, ram pressure stripping is going to play an important role in its evolution. So in summary, Wallaby has a combination of column density sensitivity and angular resolution that allows for easy cross-matching with optical counterparts, even in the absence of spectroscopic data. Kamala 13 is a really interesting group. Around 60% of the gas is shared intragroup gas, and the cloud is so faint, its optical counterpart can only be seen in the latest DESI Legacy Imaging Survey data release 10 images. The cloud is likely to have a tidal flyby origin, and its evolution is going to be affected by ram pressure stripping. And this research showcases the potential of the full Wallaby survey to detect isolated H1 clouds and other extremely low surface brightness or dark objects in the local universe. All of this work is currently being put together in a paper that's being circulated to the Wallaby team at the moment. I've already had some really helpful feedback. So look out for a paper soon in MRAS, hopefully. And thanks for listening, everyone.